This is Women Ending War, the podcast where you'll discover that there is another path, that peace is possible, and that the women here can lead the way. I'm Dr. Ilana Stockran. I'm here with Eva Dalek, my co-host. Welcome. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Shalom alaikum. How are you, Eva? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank God. Uh, interesting conversations. Uh-huh. Looking Isn't... forward for this one today. Yeah. Me too. Today, we're going to be talking about nonviolent communication. And I just want to say that when we started to plan this um, podcast and we're talking about the need to have different perspectives and to have women involved in decision making to create a different future here, to create a future that's not conflict and war, but that's people coexisting and living together in shared society, there are two ways to approach that. Um, what what Ron, uh, Professor Ronit Levin Schnorr called the sandwich approach, which is that you can look at it from top down, you can look at it from bottom up. And so top down basically says we need women in powerful positions around the table who have expertise and knowledge in things like geopolitics and strategy and also conflict re- resolution and diplomacy and all those things. But also um, there's a need for a bottom-up approach because peace happens, as Eva has said many times already now, that peace happens from within and that peace happens in people and that it's not just about what you know governments impose but also what people are doing with each other on the human level. Am I getting that right, Eva? Yeah, and then to create the link between the, the grassroots and the decision maker. And I think the disconnect right now is exactly there. And that's why when, when Professor said that she's going to resign, we're like, <laughs> no, you need to stay at the table. So yeah. I do think it, as I mentioned in the beginning of our uh, journey in this podcast, it's, it's not enough just to bring women to the table. We need them to speak the the relevance that are from people on the ground as well as being heard, being followed, and implementing these strategies. And so it's it's not an either-or approach. It's not this or that. I really believe in both and. Mm. And I'm excited yeah. to hear your perspective yes. on this. So today, yes. So today we have two wonderful guests. I'm really excited. We have um, Anat Asya and Nadia Mahmoud Giol, oh who are partners in founding Insun. Insun. Uh, Insun. Insun. Um, which is about dialogue, right? Both are nonviolent communication facilitators. Nadia mm-hmm. is a nonviolent communication internationally train, train, yes. it, internationally tr- certified trainer yes. and facilitator. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Anat is a facilitator, and you've been working together for 10 years, plus more than 10 years. Yeah, more than 10 years. More than 10 years. Okay, so Nadia, tell us a little bit about what you do. I think what we are doing and what we are bringing that uh, tools to support people, how they can connect with themselves and to bring more ease that they can connect with other people. And this is the base to create environment where we create a space that we can have easily more connection with ourselves and with others and to give space for everyone. This is the basic of uh, the attention of the tool that we are bringing. Beautiful. What do you do in Insun? Like, what is the work that you're doing in practice? Uh, let's say I will talk about what we are doing lately since uh, the last October. Uh, we initiate, for example, a Zoom call. We call it Empathy Space. Uh, that Anat and me, we do it uh, every week. Uh, one time for women, one time for men and women, one time for the team itself. And we create a space where we can talk about what alive in us regard to what we are living in this hard time. And uh, we are, as a facilitators, we give empathy and we support people how to express their pain, their anger. And in the same time, uh, uh, to connect with others that they can be able to listen to their pain and to connect with them in personal level, far away from prejudice and political issues. Because at the end, we are human beings living with the same feelings and the same needs, regard our origin or our religion. Mm -hmm. And today we are a team of uh, Palestinians, Israelis, and internationals that we are running this uh, initiative together in three languages. 
and also to um, to create a space where there is live three languages spoken in the same time without uh, technical um, uh, translation uh, this itself is a huge and big challenge to bring more than 60 between 60 and 100 people from all around the world to connect i think this action itself it show how much this tool uh, really helpful mm-hmm. that is very complicated doing it in the three languages i mean language is very complicated mm-hmm. in this in this conflict also i mean even here i just want to say when we decided to do this in english that was a complicated decision. Um, I made the decision for two reasons. One is English is my native language, but also it feels like English is like the neutral mm-hmm. language here. But on the other hand, it has its own hierarchy because not everybody speaks English, actually. Yeah. And, you know, it, it limits the conversation to people who are able to speak English. And that's also limiting and um, exclusionary in its own way. So I could only imagine how complicated that is to... Uh, you want to have three languages, you want to be inclusive. What's that like? How do you manage it? I think the fact that we, because we believe that language is part of our identity, and sometimes, and not sometimes, mostly, uh, to express our feelings and needs, this is the most easiest to do it in mother language, mm-hmm. I think, at yeah. least from my experience in the field together, in Definitely. the multicultural community. Definitely. It's a lot of years that we're doing that. Uh, how much important to bring the tools in the native language, then people can express really their feelings in their native language. Uh, we do it uh, in, in, in live translation. Uh, in the team, we are uh, Arabic, Hebrew, and English. And me, most of the time, I'm working as a translator and facilitator and trainer at the same time. And also we have, uh, now we have more Arab speakers that support. We have Anat, we have two uh, other Israelis that supporting us and also three and between three and four international trainers, nonviolence communication trainers that they're supporting us. And uh, every phrase it's spoken there, it's translated to three languages. In the that's same so, time. That's a lot of work, but <laughs> wow, it's so important. It's so important because that there is there is really, a, you know, when you're not functioning in your native language, mm-hmm. it's definitely disempowering. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's you're, you're not 100%. Also, you're not 100% at your best. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't, ex- I, I know that, you know, uh, I've, I like I said this actually recently that I've been living for 30 years not in my native language. I live in Israel and I function on my daily life in Hebrew, and I know that I can't do in Hebrew what I do in English. I mean, my Hebrew is good. You know, I did a doctorate so, and two master's degrees in Hebrew, but I it's, I'm, I always feel like I'm never a hundred percent myself when I'm not in my native language. And it's I also can, the, your so, emotional yeah. language, mm-hmm. I think, and because this conflict is all about emotions, energy in motions. And so bringing in the element of the mother tongue and like remembering your emotional body and connecting to your emotional body is really important to be expressed. And I think, Anat, you mentioned earlier that you're also a holistic healer, therapist. I'd love to hear more about that and how it influences actually the way you hold space. Because I'm sure that that's part of also the grounding practices. So Nadia and me, uh, we have two uh, common background. Both of us came from a, um, education about environment, and both of us are healers. So when we start to practice and teach uh, NVC, nonviolent communication, we knew that uh, these two things are uh, common for us. And also both of us are uh, mothers. And uh, our first uh, meeting about teaching together was uh, in uh, one of the wars that was here. I don't know. Which one? <laughs> all, so the, all the world time we have a war here. 2014. And, yes. And we cried together about the situation and we were really worried about the future of our uh, children. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, these three things are... Uh, um really adding uh, a lot of um, inner uh, power mm-hmm. for our work. Ground. And the, the tool that we are using is the NVC, Nonviolent Communication, and um, um, uh, talking 
talking stick like mm-hmm. the Indians we yeah. use to do uh, use this method and also other methods that we learn in the these years but I think that all the time the fact that we are healers really helping yeah and the fact that we remember the environment uh, not only the human beings world on on the Also, we remember the planet. Mm-hmm. I think it's a uh, make a common uh, ground that um, if we will remember this common ground, we will want more peace. Absolutely. You I, both I, come from environmental backgrounds, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and what healing. I find actually interesting. And healing. Because, and healing, inter- healing, environment, and NVC. And I think the, the interconnection between the three fields mm-hmm. is really important because very often we work in conflict transformation field or conflict resolution. We work on the common ground between the people and both people as if like there's like two sides, homogeneous side, and it's not true. And then we disconnect from the environment. And I feel like bringing the environment in, bringing the land as part of this relationship and finding the common ground for both people towards the land. The land is screaming for enough of this, mm-hmm. enough of this violence. I want peace. I want peace. The environment is, is mm. screaming, I want peace. And, and so there's a resonance that even if... The Palestinian can't hear it from the Israeli or the Israeli cannot hear it from the Palestinian. They can hear it from the land. And that's really crucial. And then hearing it from the inner... Uh, I really loved your name, the connection between insan and inner sun. Insan in Arabic meaning humanity and inner sun is like the sun within us. And it's really about the solar plexus, which is like the I am in the world and... And that's, I feel like that's what you're bringing in with the interconnection between NVC, environment, and uh, the healing, healing therapy. So and thank the, you for that. And yeah. the fact that we are women and I, mothers. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the and other, the, yeah. Both of us, we, we lead in this, this year's many groups. Mm-hmm. Some of them were with men, some of them only women, with children, uh, different uh, ages uh, of people, and the... Uh, Um, the fact that we are two leaders, women, that sometimes lead a group that there are men also there, it's really, a, I think it's also, um, it makes some change. Yes. Because the, the men have their way to talk, to think, to behave, and the women have a little different way. Ways. Like how? Like what are the differences that you see? Mm. For example, now in our uh, uh, international uh, talks that we have in the Zoom, we see that there is a, a difference between the meetings of the women only and the women and men. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's... Uh, most of the time with the women, there is a lot more empathy, I think we can say it, in the air. And even if we talk about very hard things, for example, a woman from Gaza that she's a mother for four children and really suffering, and she come again and again to our talks. And uh, Israeli mothers that have to send their children to the army, but they are peacemakers and they're really suffering from that. And even it's like two sides of the same coin. Yes, but the woman more... Uh, have capacity uh, most of the time, not always, to give each one empathy to listen, to understand the situation of the other. And uh, sometimes we see it's a little more different, difficult with the uh, men. Sometimes. I don't want to say all the men. Right. Mm-hmm. In our team, there is also, we are 10 women and one man. Mm-hmm. And uh, Interesting. He's really, really uh, want to listen and open his heart. And he's Canadian. His name is Duke. And um, our team is a wonderful team. Uh, we have Drew's uh, facilitator. Her name is Wafa and Raifa. She's a, a Muslim, a Palestinian. And Nirit and Riva. And... Uh, And uh, Roberta, and really oh, amazing, in, in Roberta Wall, really amazing uh, experience with this team. 
Yeah. Roberta Wall is one of the leaders. I've been to yes. a couple of her programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, and and you too. She's one of our teachers. She's one of your teachers. Yeah, of course. And Peggy and, and uh, um, Elin. Elin. And, and of course, Amal Hadwe, that she's a Palestinian that live in the occupied territory, mm -hmm. territories in uh, Bet Sechur. Bejala. Bejala. And uh, she's uh, also NVC trainer facilitator. And uh, she's one of our team. It's uh, very um, amazing to work with all our team. And That sounds complicated to be able to hold space for all of those stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, to hold sp you have somebody in your group who is a mother in Gaza mm -hmm. experiencing all the things that they're experiencing there and in the same space, mothers of soldiers. I mean, I know from my experience also those are really hard hard uh, exchanges. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I spent a couple of years running um, a Jewish Palestinian and Israeli Palestinian women's group. And um, each month that we went, we would meet once a month and we would hear narratives from both sides. And I remember once um, one of the Palestinian women said that if her family knew that she was sitting in a room with mothers of Israeli soldiers, they would disown her, mm -hmm. that she couldn't tell them that because they would, you know, that was just, uh, so how is that for, and also you two also have come from different places. Yeah. Yes, you have different, how, how, so how did you meet? <laughs> okay, I think uh, uh, in continuation to what Anat, she said that we met um, for the first time, we start, I start learning uh, in VC with Anat. Mm -hmm. uh, after we met in uh, Arab and Jewish circles. Uh, we are both of us peace and social activists uh, before we start learning uh, in VC. Uh, I remember uh, when the war started in uh, August 2014 with Gaza. Mm -hmm. I just time. came back from abroad and inside Israel there was also a lot of violence between Arabs and Jewish. And this time I was really scared and terrified. I'm living in uh, Nazareth Elite. It's a mixed city. And I was afraid that my daughter go to the street from both sides. Uh, Jewish youngs, they burned uh, Arab restaurants. Arabs, they attack Jewish. And it was really big mess in the city in this time. Uh, and I just called an at and we start to cry together. Also, she was worried about her children. We have children more or less in the same age. And she said, look, I want to invite you to learn with me. And then, yes, we started about six meetings we did together. And then soon we had IITs, International Nonviolence Communication uh, Training in Bejala. I went for three days. I uh, stayed 14 days. Uh, and from there, uh, start our journey. We form um, a nonviolence uh, communication practice group in Lower Galilee. It started in her home, mm. uh, in uh, Sorona, in Beit Keshet, in all the areas close where I live. And uh, from there, our journey with NVC, bringing NVC to the local community, Arabs and Jewish, started from there till today. Uh, this is what we did. We entered the houses. We made the home uh, project that every time we visited in other village. It was really, really, and we did the film. It was filmed uh, that about our journey with this group and also our private journey. And today this film, it translated to at least um, uh, three, four languages. Wow. What's the name of the film? Maybe uh, you can put a link to Woman Daring Peace. You can find it in uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. okay. And now it will be Sorry. presented nice. this uh, last month, this uh, July. It will be presented in NVC Festival in uh, Madrid. Oh, wow. Yeah. We put a link to it on, on so, the I'm, podcast. So what's the secret to your success then? I mean, so clearly you're, you've had a lot of successes and it's not easy. You face a lot of challenges. Can you speak to that about what the challenges are and how you how you uh, deal with them? For me or for Anna? Both of you. Both. You yeah, exactly. Uh, then I will talk about my motivation or you want to talk Anna? Um 
how is success? Okay. Well, I, I well, should what's the challenge? Yeah. What the challenge? Okay. The challenge yeah, and your success. I will so, please. Uh, before we started, uh, I, I was a peace activist. Also, Nadia, we, we were peace activists before we started to work together. And I, I've been in uh, many kinds of groups, and I saw that many times the groups start with a lot of passion and really wanting to be together. And after a while, people le le left. And uh, the groups that uh, initiated by Jewish, I saw that many times all the Arabs leaving and only <coughs> the Jewish uh, activists le left. So I had the thought that uh, it must, we ha have to, dis to, to see why it's happening and to understand how to do differently. So when we start to work, Nadia and me, we really want to, to work uh, like equally, like every one of us is, she is a different person, but we know that every one of us bring another uh, uh, abilities to our team, but we understood that the team have to work together, not that uh, one lead, one uh, group, like only Jewish lead, only Arabs lead, it will not work. So I really believe in uh, that, that it, it really um, bring to success if they, like you, you are too, Jewish and Arab. Oh. <laughs> it's very, it's uh, very important to every, everything that uh, if you want to work with different kind of people from different narratives. And uh, me and Nadia, we had a lot of talks, many, many hours to understand the different colors, uh, culture of each each one of us, and inside the group, what is really happening? I can see things from the Jewish side, and Nadia see things from the Arabic side, and we learned a lot during these uh, years with the NVC, and uh, now we we can we really see many things that sometimes I see uh, things that. Uh, groups that are trying to work together out and Jews and I can I can see I, I want to teach them <laughs> what uh -huh. not to do <laughs> and what to do uh -huh. because we had uh, a lot of uh, understandings in this mm -hmm. uh, area uh, I think of the um, differences in culture it's it might be beautiful things to mix cultures it it might be awful things Mm. And because we are, uh, our practice in, uh, it's in communication, I think we, we have a kind of method how to learn what's needed. Like what's, what are some of the elements of your method? What, what, what are some of the tactics that guide you? Mm -hmm. um, did, oh, did you yeah. I, I would like to add in this topic, uh, I think, uh, one of the tools that uh, can bring success in this kind of programs is creating speaks that include everyone, one near the other, and not one instead of the other. Mm -hmm. Because this is the normal life that we are living here in this country, that or me or you, mm -hmm. there is a space only for one side. Mm -hmm. And what we are creating through our work, that there is a place for everyone. Mm -hmm. With inclusive. my language, with my identity, yeah. with my narrative, mm -hmm. and I can bring difficult topics to the space, and I will be welcome. Mm -hmm. It's not neither or you or me. Yeah, it's, it's me and or. you yeah. together. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the secret. I think this is the secret, and I would add the fact that you're not coming with a very strong identity, Israeli and Palestinian. We will I talk think. about that. We'll talk about that, <laughs> yes, because I think, because what I'm hearing is also the common ground, regardless of being Palestinian and Israeli, the common ground with the environment, the common ground with the NVC, the common ground with the therapist profile, and I think what... I, my organization is Peace Activation and Peace Activation Foundation is that we need to activate the peace inside so that we can activate the peace outside and that the inner work necessary for us to do on before even interacting with the other is the foundational skills. And I think the other part is also the fact that you are, you accept the principle of psychology that we're all radically different. 
and most of us operate on sameness. Mm -hmm. And I think that principle is also an important principle for successful initiatives that are led by two leaders, whether Palestinian, Israeli, Burundi, Tutsi. Like from my experience in conflict zone, I saw those that that were successful were the people that having from both sides, but not being attached to being on one side or the other. So you're creating a field I believe, which is also what peace activation is doing, is the field of Rumi between right doing and wrong doing. There's a field, I'll meet you there. Mm -hmm. And this field is inclusive, participatory and welcoming. Mm -hmm. And that's the safety that based on your experience as healers and as people that have worked on themselves, because you cannot be a healer without having done the work, the inner work, that's what you bring. Or, or at least that's what I'm understanding from your uh, presentation. Yes, and another thing that <coughs> our tool, the NVC, is based by uh, about needs. Mm-hmm. And needs, it means the uh, common things between people. Like all of us need love, all of us need friendship, all of us need food. And we try to find the common things between all the people because... Um, As we see, people are fighting about a strategy, how to find a way to get their needs. But if we go uh, with our uh, dialogue to the basic, why they fight, what they need. Mm -hmm. So they say uh, things that the, the other side can hear. Example, we need honor, we need food, we need safetiness. Mm-hmm. And then the other side, what do you need? And they need the same. They yeah. need safety needs. They need honor. Maybe the way to get it is different. And they're yeah. fighting about how they will get it. Mm-hmm. So with the NVC tool, we can also make another common ground about mm-hmm. with uh, between people. For example, uh, Nadia and me, we did a, event, uh, a course, Zoom course, that we talked about the two narratives of the last century. The, uh, we, there is a beautiful book they called To Learn About the Other Narrative mm-hmm. that uh, written by a historian, a Palestinian historian, and the Jewish Israeli uh, uh, writers, uh, historians. And we read this book chapter by chapter, and talked about the differences of the narratives. And uh, the women that were in this uh, group, they were uh, from the occupied territories and from Israel, Jewish and Arab, Arabs. And uh, we can, with the tool of the NVC, we can talk about the different uh, um, really two different stories mm-hmm. that the uh, historians uh, completely different stories about the last century but with this uh, tool we can talk about the needs of the people in this historical uh, time and uh, that built uh, the narrative that bring the war happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, I think it just for the sake of the, the the listener the NVC framework is like talking about observation rather than judgment mm-hmm. and then going to the f- expression of feelings and then needs and making a request and I think the structured approach of this type of communication mm-hmm. doesn't allow people to get out of like getting into emotional um, trauma, dra- drama triangle and allow them to really, okay, this is what I observe. This is what, how I feel about that. These are my needs. And that's what I would like to ask. And I think what you mentioned about the what and the why is really some of the foundational skills in conflict resolution field, which is what do you want? Moving from what do you want as a position to why do you want what Mm -hmm. you want? Mm -hmm. And that's where you tackle the safety, the peace, the security, the freedom. And we see that as human beings, regardless of where we're coming from, we all need and want the same thing. Um, I'm curious, have you seen like what you would call moments of change? Like have you seen and people come like you see some kind of switch? Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? I can give you an example from something that uh, lately uh, I experienced in one of uh, our Zoom sessions. Uh, 
there is a session that I do with uh, Roberta Wall. And in the end of the program, there was an um, Israeli uh, woman, Jewish woman. And she said that she's not, she feel horrible. And in the breakout rooms, she nobody heard her and she felt not heard. And she started to share in the last minute. She opened a topic in the last minute and she started to share. And this is also can take us about change. And this is also can take us to the challenge mm -hmm. for me as a facilitator and the change for her as a participant. Uh, and she started to say that um, uh, uh, Israeli fighting, not fighting the Palestinian, Israel fighting the Hamas, Israel not killing the Palestinian, Israel killing the Hamas. And we are mothers, Israeli mothers, and uh, we also want safety. And she started to express all her. And in this moment, as a, if I connect with my identity as a Palestinian, and as Israeli at the same time, in this moment, it was very hard for me to hear her, to connect with her. And then as a, a skilled person, in this moment, I just note what arising in me. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, how I respond as a triggered person or as a professional facilitator. Okay. And I responding from my identity and how my, it's challenging for me to hear what she said or from a perf professional place to hear how much this woman need to be heard, mm -hmm. how much this woman, it's very important to be seen for her. That's and such hard work. But yes. That's the inner work that allow her to do that. Yes. I think, yeah. And and I succeed as a human being. I succeed to connect with her when she said, uh, we are the Israeli women mothers, also we are worried and terrified and we're waiting to receive, uh, it, that we're waiting to our children to come back safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the moment that I succeed to connect with her as a mother, mm. as a woman. With compassion. And not as Israeli and not as a Palestinian. It's just connecting with a mother, with a human being that she worried for her children. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, that's and the, that's the whole work. That's the yes, whole thing. Is like, the and work. I saw mm -hmm. how she just suddenly calm. Mm -hmm. wow. Just her body language is just was more Relaxed, calm. Yeah. That somebody hearing her. Wow. Yeah, especially Palestinian hearing. Yeah, her. I think that's a lot. We we discussed it even in the preparation for this podcast. How important it is just to hear each other, and that's how we can work together because we need. We cannot drop our identity. At the same time, our identity can be the foundation for the healing to take place. Because yes. you hearing her as a Palestinian Nadia would have been different than you hearing her as a Jewish Israeli Anat. Yeah. And so I think that what you're talking about is really the authenticity of your approach in your, your sitting with your trigger and still remaining professional trainer, facilitator. And that's that's really where the healing happens because of the inner work that you've done before. And all of us, I think mm -hmm. that's, for me, that's what I define as peace activation. So in the in the NVC, we have a slogan, connect before you correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, and that's uh, good. Beautiful. I think that, that is, that's, that's a good one. That's the, yeah. that's the possibility of us to make the change. Mm -hmm not to come only from our ideas and to fight from our narrative and trauma, first to connect and also to connect inside if we are triggered, like what Nadia did. And uh, you asked me before, uh, you asked us uh, what leads us to succeed, success. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that also I can add that uh, the, the inner work, like Nadia said now, and our inner work in the team, Mm -hmm. We are holding this space in the Zoom calls for nine months from the war and it go through really hard time. And we also, the team, we were in a very, very hard time. But our meetings of the team, we are doing empathy to each other. Mm -hmm. So we are really trying to walk our talk. Also me, Nadia, in all these 10 years, we passed through... Not easy times mm -hmm. in the political level, in personal level, in the working together. But we're trying 
every time to sit and to connect before we correct and to use all these tools. And the, I think if you are really doing the inner work and you're really modeling... you really can uh, give inspiration for people. Absolutely. And uh, I think that if people correct, uh, Marshall, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg uh, said that if people uh, really connect each other, uh, every um, uh, struggling can be a... Uh, uh, ...leitbarer, every struggle can be... ...all struggles can be... resolved the resolve in 40 minutes 40 minutes yes after that each sides can really understand and see and give empathy to the other side it maybe take days or weeks I don't know how until they come to this point <laughs> but then they can have a, a lot of ideas and Mm-hmm. how to uh, find solutions yeah right I think that's so powerful what you said about the about uh, connect before you correct I feel like I I feel like personally I was trained to be a corrector you know I was like you know when my, in my Jewish education we were told to correct the narrative to make sure that the where you know we, we, I was trained to be a, a soldier of debate you You know to win a debate BB you know BB Netanyahu, I mean I think he's the grand debater that and that's how I was socialized and to do that you know to always f- you know fix the narrative correct the text and what that does what that practice does is completely block human connection mm-hmm. you know and I've lived that like I feel like I've really my, my work has been to come out of that and to retrain myself in all of those things and Uh, in continuation to what Anachi said and also there is other phrase of Marshall that say that the conflicts in the level of the strategies and it's not in the level of the needs mm-hmm. since the needs it's uh, shared values human mm-hmm. values mm-hmm. and it's universal values then yeah. the conflict it's not can't cannot be in the in the level needs mm-hmm. it's just in the strategy needs how we can fulfill our needs mm-hmm. I also love Marshall Rosenberg sentence words can be windows or prisons so windows you, or walls or walls absolutely yeah I use it a lot yeah so um, before we, we wrap up um, I would love to hear your thoughts about today you know Ooh. how do you feel about the situation we're in now and how You know, do you have insights or vision for where to from here? As women and mothers, <laughs> I want to add, because it's really what you shared in the beginning. It's actually the feminine qualities that you're bringing to this. And then by saying feminine, I actually invite also men that have this feminine quality to join us. And so I would really like, I think what we're asking with this podcast of women ending war is what would be your vision? How, how can we end it? Little things. Yeah. Little <laughs> I, I really wish that we can uh, teach more, do more, bring our knowledge to the political world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm involved now in a new uh, mifflaga. Mm-hmm. Party? Party. Party that her name is uh, Kol Ezrachia. Ah. And ah. I wish to bring, uh, and uh, she's uh, managing by equally like Arabic and Arabic. Uh, And Jewish in every uh, mm-hmm. thing that they are doing and I really believe that it can it might have it being bring the change I really wish to teach more that we can teach more um, we work with teachers I hope that we can do a lot to separate uh, this knowledge and uh, to change a little bit the society the way that we are talking in the street in the political world and everything it's so needed because uh, if we have a uh, violent in our way of talking there will be violent in the end in the in the behavior in the streets in the mm-hmm. army Absolutely. so uh, softness you yes. going for more softness to bring to bring a change in the way that we connect mm-hmm. the way we connect I've, I believe that it might be bring a change in the media yeah. in addition what Anat said and uh, in addition what I do and we do together uh, that I bring also non violence communication to pupils to teachers yeah. to a lot of communities women and men uh, I'm imagining that we have education system 
that nonviolence communication class it's part of the basic program yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. wow we we'll hold that vision because mm-hmm. because I say it also from as a mother mm-hmm. as a mother as Palestinian and Israeli that I went to Arabic school and my daughter they went to Jewish school and I see the difference and and I see the the values that our children learn in the school mm-hmm And I think we have to start from there. Yeah. And when our children grow up uh, different and similar in the same time, okay, we are different from these differences also we can come together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when grow up with this as a normal thing, mm-hmm. I think all our attitude and the future of this region, it will, I can see it right. differently. Right. Right. Yeah. I would also love to see schools in general be mixed. You know, mm-hmm. there's so much yeah. segregation in Israel. Mm-hmm. Also cities, you know, there are only yeah. seven mixed cities in Israel out of 250. So. And even in this mixed city, they're not mixed. Exactly. Yeah. Like <laughs> like y- Neighborhoods that are separate, exactly. yeah. Yeah, I was a perfect example of yeah. that. So, My vision is to see that all of them learning together, Arabs and Jewish. Mm-hmm. And in VC in the same time. Yeah. And, and also, by the way, Hebrew and Arabic. And yeah, yeah, all together. We should, we should all be yes. speaking yes. Uh, all these languages as a native language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And to, this, to learn yeah. the language of each other. One yeah. of yes. the, the basic uh, skill to connect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also like holidays. You know, we mm-hmm. should be like all wishing each other happy holiday and also understanding what other people are going through. Why mm-hmm. not? Mm-hmm. Why are we not doing that? It's There's so much othering. There's so much segregation and yeah, stuff. I think it's just a reflection of the fragmentation and separation of society mm-hmm. and and it, it there's so much healing when he, when speaking the other's language like you you both mentioned the Arabic Hebrew and English and holding these spaces in these three different languages I think beyond it being an emotional language I've witnessed a lot of healing and Me as Palestinian Israel, citizen of Israel speaking Arabic and Hebrew and other languages that when I would hear when I would speak Hebrew to a, a Jewish Israeli person coming to my meetings there would be an imme- immediate relaxation mm-hmm. in the body like mm-hmm. somatic experience and the, her saying wow you speak Hebrew and you don't mind speaking this language thank you you And, and if I found that it's very interesting and for the other way also like I was just in this training where Israeli Jewish were speaking Arabic to Palestinian and that was so much appreciated and so I think there's a lot of healing not only in the technique of NVC but actually the the language itself speaking Arabic Hebrew etc so you're doing you, you both are doing a lot of like com- combined holistic approach which I really really appreciate and, and want to acknowledge I can tell about another thing that we are doing now we have now a common a uh, uh, mixed group of uh, a multicultural group in a uh, Nazareth in Nofa Galil, that a part of a big project of Me'ever Lamilim, 100... Uh, Beyond Words. It's Beyond a words, dream yeah. of uh, making an uh, army of healers. We are part of it. And uh, we really wish to, I think, we really wish to continue and mm-hmm. to teach teachers how to help, that it really separate to a lot of uh, people. Mm-hmm. NVC would absolutely transform the school experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, really? school experiences are so confrontational mm-hmm. and yeah. competitive and angry. Like there's so much in schools that's the opposite of NBC. So I mean, it would be yeah. it's a beautiful dream. I think it's a really, really wonderful and really on point dream. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there is a uh, very important sometimes people, oh, how are you going? How are you doing that? And I think the fact that both of us, we came from different background mm-hmm. and traumatic background mm-hmm. because both of us, uh, our family, uh, the trauma of our Mali related to the history of this country. Mm-hmm. I think the fact that we are coming from this place mm-hmm. also um, to hear and to understand uh, deeply uh, the tragedy and the story of the family of each other, I think this is support us also to connect more. Mm-hmm. So nice. Absolutely. Wow. And I, I think that the people that might see this program mm-hmm. from abroad, from the United States or other places, they sometimes they don't know 
Mm-hmm. That uh, instead of Israel, this is our uh, we live a common life, Jewish and yes. Arabic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It might seem in the television that all of us fighting. Yeah. No, we are uh, in the Galilee where both of us live. We are fifty percent uh, Arabic, fifty percent Jewish, and we live together. Mm. So it's a uh, it's really more complicated maybe than it's Com- I would say complex right? complex, complex yes, yes. 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 mix good and bad yeah. and mm-hmm. and there is I will finish in the story that uh, uh, there was an Indian that uh, <clears throat> is uh, said to his grandchild uh, there are two wolves that uh-huh. fighting mm-hmm. so the grandchild asked who you who is winning he said the one that you feed. Exactly. So if you will feed the good things inside, I believe that we, we might have a good future, yeah. better future. Beautiful, Beautiful. Beautiful. hopeful okay. note. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, oh, I just want to thing. finish with the, the yes. sentence that what we, uh, both of us doing and also the rest of the team together, I think it's a planting seed of hope. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. And Also, and you're modeling I, it. You're, you two are modeling it. Mm-hmm. And I would invite you and everyone that hearing us to take this seed and to plant it wherever it's needed mm-hmm. and to support us to continue planting this seed. And to enjoy our, our Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll I've send a again. link. You give yeah. us a link and great. we'll share yeah. it. Yeah. I've been to your Zoom uh, yeah, 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 several times and I really enjoyed it. I also hold, Peace Activation holds once a week a Zoom for everyone. everybody and we're not specifically targeting Palestinian and Israeli because we consider that everybody has an opinion and feeling and triggers around the conflict and so we hold a lot of these spaces in English but also in silence mm-hmm. and I've learned that silence sometimes to hold silence with the whole group for half an hour and just feel so relaxing and coming beyond words realizing that at some point there's no more words to express how we feel and being able to share a silence you Is again very very healing thank you so thank so much you. for being thank here today you. please thank share you. the links we'll share thank links with everybody and good you. luck in everything and in yeah. fulfilling all of your for, beautiful you. dreams thank for bringing our voice out absolutely yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. Yeah, thank you thank you so thank much you yeah much.